Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mo Stories. And before I begin, I do want to make an apology and a correction about about my last few videos. So especially the one with the B word that I said I'm not going to be using anymore. And I won't because it's... It, okay, what I'm making a correction about, and I apologize for saying it, I may have been a little... I may have been wrong when I used the words passive aggressive. Now, now what I see as passive aggressive, okay, may not apply to what the dictionary says passive aggressive is. It but what do you call it when you see somebody who is who has a you know you can see that they are they have aggressive tendencies but they're keeping it under control. I mean, when you hear comments like, oh, if I could punch this person out, I, I definitely would. What, what would you call that? You know, when you, when you see the person, you know, sh instead of pushing something, shoving it or, or dropping it or, you, or just with, a, with a, just under an undertone of aggression. If that's not passive aggressive, then what is? I'm not talking about your traditional passive aggressive behavior when I use the words passive aggressive. So I could be and probably am wrong about my usage of that term passive aggressive behavior. It may not apply in the way that I was intending it to apply. So if I was misleading with that, I do apologize sincerely. Although that apology will probably be would probably not be accepted by certain people anyway but that's that's beyond the point right now i'm i'm letting it go i'm still going to do my job and my work as soon as, as best as i can and with a smile on my face and i actually really enjoy my job things have gotten back to normal a little bit and i'm thankful for that but I'm not going to be dwelling on that anymore and I will not bring it up again. Like I said previously, I don't want my videos to be about that. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't want I don't want my videos to be about that kind of subject at all. But I do want to talk about the change subjects now to, to talk about the real subject of this video. I want to talk about overcoming insecurities. Because this is actually 100% the reason why I'm doing my channel. And it really applies even to the Moe's CD culture show and tell. As a kid, I had a pretty terrible upbringing. My parents were not the best of parents. And I want to get in, I do want to get into this, but I don't want this to be a pity party. I don't want you pitying me. I don't want, this is not, a, I'm not complaining. It, it doesn't excuse certain behaviors of mine from the past that, I, that I've done. It's just my, when I started, well, before I started this channel, I've been, I've been dealing with anxieties. I've been dealing with depression. I've gone through a lot of up and downs in my life. In the last 30 years, I must have lived at like at least 25 different places. I for some for whatever reason I move into a place and and things are terrible. Either either the place is falling apart, the neighbors are are are, are just a holes or there's always some reason why I never get kicked out. I never ever get kicked out. I always end up leaving because it's because the environment was just toxic and unhealthy. I finally found a place here where I'm living now that I'm actually pretty comfortable and happy here. I'm I'm actually getting along with my with my landlords or you know the superintendents and everything. And and I really like it. I live in a quiet part of the basement. I don't disturb anybody. Nobody disturbs me here. So that is a bonus and and I really want to share and 
when I say uh, I'm overcoming insecurities, I kind of hope that I'd be able to help other people, if if I can, to to overcome insecurities too. Whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, whether it's it's somebody bothering you, uh, to take the lessons that I'm learning and try to try to share those lessons with other people as 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 much as I can. And that is a part of my Mo, my Mo CD culture show and tell. I'll put this all in context. When I was a, from since I was born to, to like, my mother was not, was, was just a terrible mother to me. She always put me down. She always created a, a pretty volatile environment to live in. I've, I've always been berated. I've always been like lowered to the lowest low growing up. My, they just didn't understand, especially when I started learning more about, about things. And the more educated I got on certain subjects and everything, it just, they're, they were so uneducated growing up. My, my parents didn't complete their schooling. They, they left school at a very early age. And you got to understand, it was the 60s, you know, in the 50s and the 60s. I was born in 71. My father was about maybe 17, 18 years old when I was born. My mother was just being a, a little bit older in her early 20s. But they were not ready for kids. They were not ready for me. And I, and I paid the price. I always got... I always got blamed for things I never did. I wasn't even around, but yet I would get blamed so often for things that I, I just wasn't. I didn't do. So I lived. I lived a pretty like internal you know, type of life. You know, trying to trying to find myself in a in a in like. I'm, I forgave my parents, of course, a long, long time ago, and I learned to overcome my insecurities mainly by finding solitude in, 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 in entertainment like music and TV and movies and stuff. That's where I learned my moralities, not from my parents, not from school, not from, from the church and everything. I learned, my, I learned how to overcome all my insecurities from the media, weirdly enough. Not saying that everything in the media is correct, but I I somehow recognized and took all the good aspects out of that to try to get my personality to where I'm, I want to be a good person. I don't want to lie, cheat, or steal. I don't want to be, be that kind of person. And... For, for for since forever since like for the last 30 years and that was the reason why I I went to Montreal to live there for 10 and a half years to find myself to be a better person to try to to explore who I really am inside to get real I was going to call this episode if you want real I'll give you real but but I, I decided to call it overcoming insecurities because that is really the point of all this this is what I'm here to try to do so so yeah that that's basically kind of the how my history you know how I how it shaped the, the person I am today I really have to thank weirdly enough the media not news. I don't like the news. I never watched the news because I find that just too depressing, and it really does me no good to knowing knowing that kind of kind of things. If I were to watch the news, I'd be depressed all the time, and 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 I probably would have never have gotten out of my insecurities. I grew up. My main things to watch was Spider Man, Star Trek, then Star Wars. Then, then, and then in music, I, I was a big Kiss fan. Then I discovered Metallica in the 90s. And then, and, and then the late, well, no, actually in the 80s, or like throughout the 80s and, and just early, early 90s. But, but is when I discovered 
tool, that's when that's when things really started forming for me. That where the morality really started setting in and it, it really molded who I am. But everything from Star Trek with the live long and prosper and that Vulcans don't lie. Always trying to be the good person. Always trying to be be the best that I can. And and some people they don't seem to appreciate that. They rather they rather stick to their, their clandestine like little you know, take what you can and 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 I uh I I am I you just watch my some of my previous videos. Watch my video where I talk about the moralities of Tool and why Tool is my favorite band. If you really want to get into my personality, that's 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 how you do it. Now, I people have been trying to talk like yeah. I was telling somebody yesterday about my plans for this video. And what I was going to do to try to overcome my insecurities. And they say, well, don't do that. You're going to lose your audience. And it's not a good look on you. And and also, somebody had said that when they watched my videos, okay, they were trying to push my buttons. They were saying that, that oh, you're going to, that you're the laughing stock. That I'm the laughing stock of the, of the, of, of the place and everything. Good. I, I, if I'm if I'm making people laugh, what's the harm of that? Even if it's at my own expense, it doesn't matter. That's not why. Why are people so 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 like clinging to their to their to their status symbol and their image, 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 image? I want my image to be truth, honesty, respect, consideration. And, and and being transparent, being real, not hiding anything. It's 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 always those people that that they that they trying to protect their 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 image that they have something to hide. And it's like I don't understand that. If you're going to put a fake a front out there to to try to be something you're not, so be it. So be it. But just don't expect me to be that kind of a person. I love people. I'm always going to be the first one. If you if you need help, I will try to help. Regardless of you know if it puts me out, some, and sometimes I've helped people where it it took uh, took things away from me. But that's how I want to be. I don't want to be the type of person. Yes, I used to be kind of a easy to take advantage of. You know, because because I'm always so trustworthy and and I was born the year of the dog. Okay, that is my Chinese horoscope. Whether you believe in that or not, and there's like the normal horoscope of the of, I'm a Capricorn, of course, being born in January. But I but that's not accurate. You look into the Chinese horoscope horoscope, and you look at how accurate that is. I am like a dog. I'm loyal. I'm friendly. If I had a tail, it'd be wagon most of the time. I my I should change my middle name to loyalty because when I like something and I'm into something, I am loyal. I stay loyal until they prove to me that they're that I, it, unless they prove to me that my loyalty is misplaced, I will be if I care for something, I am loyal. 100%. I mean, Fight Club has been my favorite movie since 1999. Tool has been my favorite band since the beginning, since since 2000 and no, uh, sorry, since 1992. So, when I go to a when I when I frequent a store like Frank's Music, for example, if there's quality and there's quality there. I go towards quality and I am loyal, loyal to a fault. And 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 people have taken advantage of that in the past and gotten things out of me and and that I should have been more careful. I should have been I should have had my eyes open about that. But I choose to be a good person as much as I can. 
And if that means being taken advantage of, it sucks. And I, I, I wish they would stop doing it. But, but I can't, I can't help it. That's, I just, it just, I want to, I want to be, I want to be there for people. And, 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 and again, this is why I'm doing these videos. That's why me sharing my CD collection with everybody is so important because I'm showing you the things that made me, made me a better person. It's, it was my sanctuary. It, it was my, so, my, my solitude. I, I, I asked why I love music and I want to share music with everybody. The things that make me happy, I want to share with people. And hopefully, hopefully, help people get out of their insecurities. Maybe break some people, somebody's uh, depression or, or whatever they're, 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 I want to see people do good. There's so much, there's so much crime. There's so much legalized crime, as I call it, with inflation and like, okay, I'll give you a little quick example of something that really bothers me. I go in, I like, I go into a corner store just, just a little bit down the street. I'm not going to mention what chain it is, but you go in and look at the sign, and if you're not paying attention, it says, like, for example, buy two, and it, like, it is a multiple sticker where you you buy two and you get a, you know, and they show the price, two for two dollars, okay? But if you don't see that little fine print that's in the corner that says each. You might think that it says two for two dollars, but no, it's two for two dollars each. That each changes it, so you're buying two at four dollars. Why didn't they? Why don't they just say two for four dollars instead of saying two and have the two dollars pr prominent but really small in the corner? They have each. It's to mislead you. It's to, so that you spend more money needlessly because they have because uh, when I bought I bought the item and I'm like why did they overcharge me I thought it was two for two dollars but no it's actually two two for four dollars but why don't you just say that if you're going to do those darn multiples I'm if I'm going if I'm being conned into buying more than and paying more than I thought I was going to be paying that's just wrong. I call that legalized crime. And and not every store does that, but the stores that do do that, shame on you. Shame on you because that's just that's just so disrespectful and so deceitful. It's deceitful. I don't know what else to call it. It's just deceitful. Yeah, yeah. I am going back to how how, how I grew up. Grew, I grew up, I grew up poor. We were the poorest family on, on, wherever we lived, we were the poorest family on the block. People noticed it too, because we had the worst clothes. We had, we, you know, my parents were so uneducated and, and it was obvious, obvious to everybody that, so I have been trying to overcome that all my life. It follows me wherever I go, and and you, people hear my last name, and 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 they, and and there's this, and there's a kind of a behind the scenes unspoken reputation of our name, and there's a few other names in our, in our family background that could you know, that are they they make that association. But I want to break out of that mold. I don't want to be the the poor boonies type of type of kid that that I came from. I want to be more worldly. I want to be more more again open and transparent. Now, the thing that people were tell a couple of people were trying to talk me against doing. Because as you know, and I spoke about this a couple of times in my previous videos, I have bad teeth. Now, why I never, I, tr okay, there's a history there about why I have bad teeth. At first, it first started from, from being a kid and not being taught properly how to brush my teeth properly. 
my youngest brother, he's the only one that has actually really decent teeth because he learned he learned later on to take care of his teeth. But that kind of that that's when my parents started learning more about it and then started getting. But but it was too late for me. Going to, and then going to the dentist. We had a we had a horrible torture dentist called Dr. Robert Legier. I'm sure he's not in practice anymore. That was a long time ago when I was in, in like in my like between preteens to but it was such a ordeal going to the it traumatized me, you know, and not in a good way, not where I'm oh I want to start taking care of my teeth now. It, I don't know. It just I just never got into the habit. I was always super lazy about it. When I went to Montreal and stayed there for 10 and a half years, at one point I did get my teeth fixed. I had I had all these good I had I had a nice smile finally. I, and like I I and I and I had just gotten it maybe for about a month or two and I was and I had this these false teeth that I was wearing like that hide that that it my smile actually looked decent i had all it work done and everything and then but how i had gotten it done as i was on social assistance for a while up in montreal and and the, and and when you're on social assistance for a bit of a time you got you got you they they help you get your dental done and i and i everything was going great you know, with especially with that, I I was feeling much less insecurities than I had ever done before, and everything was changing. But then I was okay. I was living at the a men's shelter called called the Booth Center. It's a Salvation Army place on the corner of what was it? Ah, no, ah, I forget the the street corner, but it was called the Booth Center up in up in Montreal. Salvation Army men's shelter and and I ended up moving out now I was able to take almost everything with me but my teeth they were still sitting there right next to the sink and and it became impossible impossible to go get those teeth to be able to have a perfect smile it and after if you're if you're out of there for a month and I had no because I had moved up north and lived with a buddy for a while but it was impossible to go and get those teeth it's and and at the time also moving in with uh, with this with with my, he's my friend I mean we had a falling out a little bit when we moved in we just didn't communicate properly he uh, there was there was some drug use being used and everything and things were just not good and but and I started going into a, a big depression again and that didn't help everything that made our the relationship strain I have been talking to my good buddy now because I I felt sorry for the way I was being behaving and I and he was sorry for the way he he was behaving and we sort of, we we have reconciled finally reconciled all that and i can talk to him online and and i missed the guy because he was a cool guy but we just didn't click at the time when we were living together and yeah when i couldn't go and get my teeth anymore that kind of just reverted everything back to where where it was before and 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 now and for the last 10 years i've been trying trying so hard to get new teeth i i had saved up i had saved up quite a bit to get my new teeth but then covid happened and when covid happened that that took all that money that that i was saving up for that and and i had to use it for this and that because i wasn't working for a couple of months i didn't have a computer i was trying to get the the the, the supplement but by that time it was too late all that money was gone no no way to save up that, that money again so so i i've been trying trying to correct the, the bad teeth that i have and and a lot of it is on me i should have i should have 
somehow learned to take care of my teeth better. But but like I said, this was like ten, uh, about maybe maybe tw uh, I would say a good a good twenty five years ago where I had my teeth fixed and everything was perfect. If I just it wasn't a full set of of, of denture, it was just my partials. But it was a it was a new beginning for me. Everything was going great until I lost those parcels. Now, what some friends at at work had been trying to not tell me not to do is, and this is about again, this is about me trying to trying to overcome my insecurities. I want to sh I want to quickly show you what I. They don't do that. Don't show them your teeth. But it's, I want you to see what I'm working with. This is the only time I'm going to do this. And and I'm not going to do this again in my videos. But I am just more going to very quickly show you what's in my mouth. Just so you understand how terrible it is. And how I am very self-conscious about this. I'm This is me overcoming another barrier. Now, if if I hope you understand as my viewers I hope you understand how important this is for me to be able to do this because because uh, it, it, it's an it's an embarrassing situation and it's just my attempt to 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 help other people overcome their insecurities because it because it's something I am very embarrassed about and I try never to show him I, I learned to talk this way so I can hide it but here I go okay I'm going to show you finally show you what I'm working with okay that was it that's that's all that's that's what you're going to get from here on in I, I will not be showing them again and again like I said at the beginning of this video I will not be using that B word again or even talking about that subject anymore. That is between me and that other person. And and again, again, for everything that I, I will take responsibility for the things that I've done wrong and I am apologizing and I... And I kept my promise. I am not complaining anymore. I am doing my work the best I can. And and that's all I can that's all I can give you. I that's all I can promise that I will do the best to be a better person, to be a better man. That 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 is my promise, not just to people where I work, but everybody in general. To everybody out there this this is who I am I I, I I I'm very happy with the person I am inside I have not been this happy about who I am since Montreal because in for a long time in Montreal I was living the best life even though I was still going through hardships even though people were still taking advantage of me and you'll see when I do get into more of my Mo stories, and I am going to be telling more Mo stories, that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna like find these stories interesting. They're all true, and and yeah, that's basically how it goes. So so this was a big episode for me, and. And I, I hope you appreciate what I'm what I what I'm putting myself in through just to it's like I said it's not necessarily about getting the the monetization because I want to get I want to start set up a, a patreon but I feel I feel bad for asking people for money because if I start a patreon all that money, all that money that I get from the Patreon will be would be going strictly for my teeth. So note that in the future, if I set up a Patreon account for myself where people can donate money to me, it is strictly strictly for my teeth or a new computer. One of the two. I'm not sure which one is more important right now. Maybe the computer. I had some glitches happen this week and it kind of bothered me. But this kind of bothers me more. I really want to fix this up. 
as much as possible. And yeah, so when I do tell my Mo stories about my my time in Montreal, I am going to try to get it get it all in chronological order from from the from the from moving up there to the first few we, few weeks, few months, and all the cool little stories that took place. I want I want to especially those first five years because I lived up there for ten and a half years. Those first five years was a wild, wild roller coaster ride of ups and downs and and going from here and there. The types of jobs I did. It's a, it's a, it's a strange, strange time that I lived up there. But but again, I have never had never felt more at peace with myself than when I lived in Montreal. And I'm finally starting to get doing these videos. I'm finally starting to get back that peace of mind and that and that goodness in myself that that I really want to be. I don't like being a bad person. And I never was a bad person. I always tried to do the right thing and be a good person. But it's a like again. It's but it's about overcoming those insecurities. And if I can help other people overcome their insecurities, that is really one hundred percent the goal of these of these videos. That's why I started them in the first place, and that's why doing my most culture C, uh, most cultures CD show and tell is is so important yeah I, before I start rambling on too much and it's over 30 minutes now I'm going to leave it at that and again the same as always please please be safe take care I will see you on the flip side and have a great day evening night wherever you may be Peace, everybody.